The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, I'm Steve for Botest.com, and today we're going to be conducting a test on the Carolina Skiff 198 DLV. This boat is powered by an all-new engine from Evinrude, the E-Tech 90HO. It's actually a detuned 115 horsepower engine with four cylinders and 105 cubic inches of displacement. That's 33% more displacement than the standard 90 horsepower E-Tech. Let's start with a look at the performance. The Carolina Skiff 198 DLV has a length overall of 19 feet and a beam of 96 inches. With an empty weight of 1,660 pounds, full fuel, two people, plus the 405 pound test engine, we had an estimated test weight of 2,665 pounds. With the E-Tech 90HO turning a three-bladed 14 and three-quarter by 17 Viper propeller, our top speed was 42.1 miles per hour at 5,700 RPM. The fuel burn was 11 gallons per hour, which translates into a range of 103 miles. When dialed back to a best cruise speed of 3,000 RPM, we were running at a respectable 17.9 miles per hour while burning fuel at a rate of 3.5 gallons per hour. That meant we could keep going for nearly 8 hours and 138 miles while still holding back a 10% reserve. Now, in my opinion, here is the single most important aspect of this engine's performance. We reached planing speed in only 2.8 seconds. In our test, the boat accelerated to 20 miles per hour in 5.3 seconds and reached 30 miles per hour in 7.8 seconds. When hitting the throttle, her bow comes up nearly 12 degrees, and that seems to have a lot to do with the fact that for this model year, Carolina Skiff moved the fuel tank aft, and therefore, the center of gravity was moved aft, which actually makes this version of the DOV slightly harder to get on plane. But I never lost visibility past the bow thanks to the quick planing time and the 90HO's high power at low RPMs. She's a flats boat with only a 9-inch hull draft, so she did give a bit of a slap as we rode through the light chop, but her real advantage lies in getting into skinny water where others fear to tread. Now let's take a look at some of her features. What I think is the most distinguishing feature is that they did a good job on casting decks both at the bow and at the stern. Steps to both sides bring us right on up to the bow deck. Plenty of storage underneath both sides and notice around the opening it's channeled to drain water right down to the deck and out the deck drains. Carolina Skiff went with the turn and lock latches, I'd rather see the lift and lock. There's no real anchor storage except for one of these two compartments. I'd like to see a cleat fully forward so that if I was anchoring, I could use a center cleat instead of having to anchor from the side cleats. Look at this, 24 inch high bulwarks. Aerated live well, clear top, gasketed all the way around. Here is the kind of latch I like, the lift and release. And of course to both sides we've got jump seats. Under the cushions, there's access to more rigging. Patches to both sides, port leads to the oil reservoir, starboard leads to the gas tank. We've got a double wide helm seat, the seat back flips to become an aft facing seat. Underneath is a cooler held in place with cargo netting. The helm is mounted just slightly to the left of center which is convenient for the double wide seat because now I can have someone sitting next to me for a second set of eyes looking forward. Four gauges, white face, chrome bezels, anti-fog lenses, the Evernote alarm panel just to the right side of that, plenty of room up above to mount a moving map display. Stainless wheel with steering knob is mounted to a tilt base. With their stout construction and no-nonsense, no-frills layout, this is clearly a boat that is intended to be a work boat and work harder for her owner. Well, that's my look at Carolina Skiff's 198 DLV, powered by the Evinrude E-Tech 90HO. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.